Coming up on Inspire, Kansans will cast their vote very soon on the abortion amendment for the Kansas Constitution, a discussion on the impact of a yes or no vote on women in Kansas. Stay with us. Inspire is sponsored by Kansas Furniture Mart, using furniture to inspire conversation. And by the Blanche Bryden Foundation. Hello and welcome to Inspire. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with my Inspire co-host and my adopted sisters. We have Amber, we have Amy, and we have Betty Lou, and we have you here today too. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to talk about a very important issue that's impacting women in Kansas. Many of us have heard of the recent Supreme Court reversal of Roe versus Wade. And I'm not sure about all of you, but it's getting a little hard to miss the signs while driving around. Vote yes, value them both. Vote no, protect our rights. What does this all mean? That's why we're all here today. We're going to discuss the Roe versus Wade reversal by the Supreme Court and the impact of a yes or no vote for the abortion amendment in Kansas. Here to talk about the impact on our fellow sisters, our friends, and women across the nation is Dr. Sharon Sullivan, a professor and theater department chair for Washburn University, who is also a professor of women and gender studies. And she has a specialty focus on women's studies and human trafficking, and is a welcome and wonderful repeat guest here on Inspire. Dr. Sullivan, thank you so much oh, for being here. Welcome thank back. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for we inviting me. Thank you. Dr. Sullivan with the, with the difference between, because the first ones I, Honestly, the most I saw was value them both. And I'm thinking, okay, well, the language of that is, well, sure, we want to value them both. And then, but then I'm thinking, is that really what they mean? Or the vote, no. Okay, so what does that mean? Could you please explain the two different stances? Yeah, that's a great question because I think it's very confusing and uh, the language itself is really confusing. And I've been studying for a while and uh, every morning I would wake up and I'd be like, should I vote yes or should I vote no? Because oh, yeah. I'm so confused, right? right. Mm -hmm. So a yes vote means that uh, women in Kansas don't have a right to abortion they don't have any rights um, around reproductive health that the politicians in our state can decide. Now, a no vote means no, keep the Constitution as it is. So I, my little memory is no change means keeping the right, no change to the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in 20, what, what's happened is in 2019, the Kansas... Um, Supreme Court said that women have a basic right to privacy, and that includes abortion. Um, and now what ha what's happening is the legislature has put it on the August ballot to say, yes, uh, women have no right to uh, bodily autonomy, they have no right to an abortion, and the legislature legislators can decide what uh, the law should be around abortion specifically, but other um, reproductive rights as well. A no vote means leave the Constitution as it is, meaning women have a right to an abortion through privacy laws of the Constitution. And it doesn't prevent anyone, it doesn't prevent other laws around abortion. It just means that that's a basic right. And currently in Kansas, abortion is heavily regulated. Heavily. And so you know, there is some concern that if we were to make the move to remove what the Kansas Constitution currently says, um, then the question then becomes, you know, what could happen, right? Mm -hmm. right. So, um, so I suppose that is a great segue to the next question. What could happen if, if this becomes no longer a right in the state of Kansas? Well, I think it's fair to explain also what Roe v. Wade was. Mm -hmm. Roe v. Wade was decided in, what, 1972? Three. <laughs> Um, and it basically said that the, the U.S. Constitution has the right to privacy mm -hmm. for women to make reproductive choices. Mm -hmm. 
and that includes the right to abortion. Mm -hmm. so, so no, the U.S. Constitution does not say women can have abortions. Mm -hmm. It says women have the right to privacy. Mm -hmm. That includes the right to have an abortion. That's kind of what the Kansas Constitution now says, because mm -hmm. recently the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade saying that it's not a federally protected right in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're saying, which means that the states get to decide. Mm -hmm. And our state decided that our const the state constitution has that protective right in it. And the question then in August is, does it or does it not? Sure, and if the question is answered by voters to say, no, there is not a right, there's a mechanism in the amendment that, that is something we really need to talk about. And that is that there is language in, in this um, proposal that says you now, give this right to your legislators to make decisions about the future of reproductive health in the state of Kansas. And I think that's that's where we really need to dig into the heart of the discussion, because what is the future of health care for women in the state of Kansas if we no longer have this right to health care, which is abortion? Um, what is what is the future look like for women in Kansas? What, and, and there are other implications that go along with that that we need to discuss as well. So please walk us through that, because it's very confusing to a lot of us who aren't that, you know, educated on the topic. So if our legislators, our politicians are making laws, they are also defining medical terms. And one of the problems is that those terms aren't always correct, right? So mm -hmm. what qualifies our citizen legislator to be making decisions based on uh, medical care or science? Nothing. Okay. There's nothing to legislate or there's nothing required for a legislator, there's no education required before they make decisions about any of these laws. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we see, for example, is uh, some legislators, not just in Kansas, but across the United States, redefining medical terms, right? Mm -hmm. So Based on what? Based on medical science or based on? Based on their own beliefs, Okay. not based on science. So for example, one of the things that we've seen is this idea of, um, the beginning of life is the beginning of fertilization. Now science says a sperm and a and a, an egg don't meet and instantly make a baby, right? right. Um, but they're saying, the, some legislators are saying, well, once that egg is fertilized, you're pregnant. But mm -hmm. that's not what the medical science right. says mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some legislators across the country and in Kansas saying things like uh, birth control is a form of abortion. And so they want to outlaw uh, birth control. Which is also wow. not medically accurate, correct? Which is not medically accurate, right. So, you know, birth control can do a lot of different things. It can prevent implantation. It can uh, prevent fertilization. Mm -hmm. Regulate a woman's cycle. Absolutely. Down on severe cramps, migraines, mm -hmm. a myriad right. of other health issues associated with having a period mm -hmm. that, that don't result in pregnancy. Right. And so, the, so taking that medication doesn't always isn't always uh, an individual's choice regarding not getting pregnant. Sure. It can be used for a lot of things, but even if it is being used to not get pregnant, sure. mm -hmm. right? Like there's there's a lot of different things, and yet some legislators, some politicians are trying to define birth control as a form of abortion because it's preventing mm -hmm. a, a, per, a woman from getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there seems to be a lot of this issue that revolves around the way we talk about this issue. So thinking about sort of our two major players in this campaign for this amendment, we've got value them both and we've got Kansans for constitutional freedom. So let's dig into sort of the rhetoric or the mm -hmm. way that these people are discussing these sides of the issue. So what are we seeing coming out of both sides of this issue that um, could potentially be problematic for voters who are trying to make a decision about this? Well, one of the problems that I see, and let me talk about um, Value Them Both website first, because I've looked at that quite a bit. Uh, one of the problems I see is that some of the information is misleading. So one of the examples is um, that uh, we'll have all these, we'll become a, a, a destination, mm -hmm. abortion right, destination. Right. Mm -hmm. I've seen commercials about that sure, already. Sure. Yeah. Why would be, we become an abortion destination? Because the states around us have banned abortion. And right. so desperate women take desperate mm -hmm. chances. Mm -hmm. um, and desperate women take 
the risk of going to another state. And of course, when we think about that, I mean, all what we're talking about is, is primarily middle class and upper class women who can mm -hmm. afford mm -hmm. to make that trip, who can afford to take the time off, who can afford to meet the regulations requiring a 24 hour wait, mm -hmm. which right. Kansas has, mm -hmm. yes. right? And um, statistically speaking, the women we're talking about are middle class, white, married women who have already had one child. Yes, that's and, and I think that's because I think that we are diving into some scary territory when we make assumptions about who we think is getting abortion care. Mm -hmm. When we look at the actual numbers on this, it's not who, it's not this picture that we're being presented. Okay, and yeah. you, you touched on the monetization of it too, because they keep you know, saying, oh well, Kansas just wants to get all this money. But that's not true either. No, it's really not. Uh, one of the, the, term, the terminology used on the Value Them Both website that I really object to is the term, the abortion industry. Mm -hmm. The implication is that that these folks are doing this for profit. I mean, when we think about an industry, it's mm -hmm. for profit. When sure. really what, what they're doing is health care for yep. women, right? I think we also, the term industry calls to mind this sort of like um, churning out of a product at a yes. high rate. Right. And that's not what is happening. We've seen steadily at the national level, abortion rates have been on a decline. They mm -hmm. did rise a bit under the Trump administration, which is a whole nother discussion that we could have yes. at some point. But but the fact mm -hmm. of the matter is, is that these numbers have been steadily on the decline. And so yes. I suppose my concern then becomes, are our legislators actually concerned about the number of abortions that are or are not taking place? Or are they concerned about just having this law on the books? Well, we're going to take a really short break and we'll be back very soon to continue this discussion. And we're back. The ladies on the last segment, we were talking about um, how this is presented, the language that is used and, and, and the information that is provided and why that information, some of it is may, maybe we should trust it, maybe we should not trust it. So um, one of the uh, supporters of the vote no mm -hmm. is the Kansans for Constitutional Freedom. So uh, if you look at their website, what types of things are they saying, Sharon, do you know, that, uh, that we should be aware of? I think one of the misconceptions is that a uh, if this uh, uh, law is enacted and uh, or or this amendment mm -hmm. um, that abortion will be automatically immediately banned in Kansas, and that's not true. Um, we the laws we have will be in effect until new laws are created. However, I will say that just this last March there was a bill presented to the legislature that was a full ban, complete ban on any kind of abortion with no exceptions. That failed in committee. Um, but I don't, you know, in Kansas, I see these things being brought up over and over and over again. And with the fall of Roe v. Wade, I would expect to see it again so coming up in the legislature. So can you speak to what some of the uh, laws we have now on the books in Kansas? Sure, there's a lot of regulations for abortion clinics. Um, everything from, the size of the font that they can use on uh, documents to um, women are required to have an ultrasound mm -hmm. uh, before, they're, before they're allowed to have an abortion and they're offered the opportunity to see that ultrasound. Um, Parental consent. Uh, parental consent already mm -hmm. exists. Heavy uh, regulation on public funding, which is a misnomer because yeah. if, under federal regulation, you can't use public money for abortions. In the state of Kansas since 2013, there have been four abortions that were conducted because the life of the mother was threatened. Those were funded in partial using taxpayer money, but it was $454 total, which equates to less than a penny per taxpayer to save the lives of four women. So there are already heavy regulations in place, um, which is, a, is problematic on the Value Them Both website because they keep alluding to the fact, not alluding, they're outright saying that, yeah. that public money is gonna be used for this. It's just not legal. And it's, and it's not covered in the, most insurance policies right. won't cover it. Anyway. Right. That's yeah, right. Affordable Care Act doesn't cover it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
public employee uh, insurance acts, they don't they don't cover it. That's um, right. I think you have to get a writer for that if you have That's private right. insurance. Mm -hmm. I, I've and never met anybody cost. who's done that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what's so scary about it is because they make it sound like it's all inclusive. Mm -hmm. When you just pointed out, it's less than a penny a person, mm -hmm. and it was only in four instances. And again, to save the life of the mother. Right. And we we just really need to as voters. Mm -hmm be sure that we flesh everything out and don't just take somebody else's word for it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, and, and talk about what would happen in terms of the health of the life of the mother or you know, victims of rape, incest. Talk about that as it relates to both of these. So right now, um, as I mentioned, the, there are some exceptions in some states like the life of the mother, rape, incest, those types of things, um, but it's not consistent between states. Uh, one of the things our neighbors, Missouri, I just read yesterday, hospital lawyers are telling doctors that if they have someone, a woman come in with an ectopic pregnancy, don't operate on her until it's life-threatening. Wow. Because of the, the, the trigger law the, that was uh, enacted when Roe v. Wade was banned, making any kind of abortion illegal in Missouri. And so, um, except if the life of the mother is threatened. The problem with the life of the mother language, though, is that we have no universal standard for what life of the mother means, yeah. which means it's highly subjective. So if you go to your medical professional and you are pregnant and they say, well, there's a 50% chance this pregnancy is gonna kill you, there's nothing that says, well, that's enough of a percentage to ensure that you have a right to a, an abortion. Yes. And so we're in really tricky territory there when we don't even have the basic understanding of what we all accept to be what is, what is really a threat to the life of the mother. Is it a 20% chance that the pregnancy could kill you? Is it an 80% chance? We have no way at this point because the language hasn't been codified in statute. Yeah, and this is one of the reasons, I, I, I realize this might be a pipe dream at this point, but I really would like to see uh, abortion, reproduction, reproductive rights moved out of the criminal code and, in, mm -hmm. and be treated as healthcare, right. right? Like this should be between you and your doctor and your God. Because there is a criminalization aspect to these laws we've been Yes, at. and we've seen that in state after state after state. We can talk about Texas, mm -hmm. right, who has this vigilante law. It's a bounty. A bounty, mm -hmm. where it's if I see you taking someone to get an abortion, I can turn you in and get money for that, right? That language, oh my yeah. yeah. That language was repeated in the Oklahoma legislation that says that if you are caught aiding or abetting, and again, there's no definition as to what aiding and abetting means, mm -hmm. if you are found guilty of aiding and abetting, then you are in criminal trouble. Okay, question. So this obviously impacts women greatly. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, greatly. Sure. Yeah. Where are the guys in this? Where, I mean, a, a woman doesn't get pregnant on her own. Amen. You know? So are, yeah. are, are there any any laws that are saying, you know, that if, if a guy impregnates a woman and she doesn't want to get pregnant, he gets in trouble? I mean, how does that work? I mean, you've got, you have laws in states about uh, child support and things like that, right. but that also involves a lengthy and expensive, oftentimes legal process that the, the people that are going to be harmed if, if abortion is not viewed as health care, then those are the exact people who don't have the resources to engage in a lengthy, mm -hmm. scary, oftentimes legal battle just to get basic support. And I think traditionally when we look at laws about reproductive health and, and frankly decisions about people making their own individual choices, it disproportionately impacts women as, com as compared to their male counterparts. You know, you talked earlier about those who could afford it. Let's delve in a little bit more to those who cannot afford it. What's happening to them? Well, I think we'll continue to, I think we'll see an increase in uh, women and children in poverty. Uh, Kansas already has uh, one in six kids going hungry. I think that number will increase. Yeah. Um, we'll, if one in four women are forced to carry a, ch a child that they don't want, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're talking about a large percentage of children who don't have access to a healthy family. Um, who are unwanted. So what does that mean for the foster care system that's already, already struggling? Or abuse rates. Or abuse you know, rates. Full. Which is already, I, I think last year alone, there were 59,000 cases filed with Child Protective Services in the state of Kansas. Mm -hmm. yeah. 59,000 in right. a year. Right, and you know, when we talk about, I, one of the things I hear a lot is, oh, well, you can just put them up for adoption. There's, there's hundreds of 400,000 kids in the nation up for adoption who are not adopted. 
right? And, and, and we're paying for those kids, as we should, but that number's not going to decrease. Mm -hmm. um, if or if we... you have people who don't have adequate prenatal health care, you may be looking at a situation where now you're inundating the um, public schools who already have a lack of special needs right. funding. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just the right. domino effect here. It feels almost endless, particularly yes. for women and children. Oh yes. my gosh, that just yes. went back. That just made me think, okay, a penny a person for the legal abortion o versus- Over a 20 year period of time. Yeah, please, versus please. how much it's gonna cost the taxpayer mm -hmm. for all the health care, everything else. Oh my gosh. Services. And where are we gonna get yes. additional resources? Would be my question. That's a great question, and I think you know. I think one of the points you made is the cost of of um, vetting this law. Could you mm -hmm. say something more about that? I think you researched so, that. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, obviously, if this amendment passes and the women in the state are no longer legally allowed to access abortion, it's inevitably going to cause lawsuits. And I think what the voters really need to understand is that they pay for those lawsuits. So when we look at states like Texas, they're in the millions and millions of dollars that taxpayers are footing the bill for those lawsuits challenging their abortion laws. So I think if people are truly concerned about this from an economic taxpayer perspective, then they need to think about these lawsuits that are, are inevitable. There is right. no way that organizations are not going to challenge this in a court of law and taxpayers will foot that bill. Oh my gosh, okay you guys, we have to take another short break, but do stay with us. We'll be back to wrap up our discussion on the Roe versus Wade reversal and the upcoming abortion amendment vote. That's where you come in. We are back. Thank you for staying with us. We need you to vote. Vote what you think, but vote with intelligence. Vote with information. Dr. Sullivan, if you could kind of please go back on the signage, you know, value them both, vote no. It's kind of like yes means no, no means yes. Please explain. <laughs> <Woo. explain. laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and that is part of the confusing language. So. No means no change to the Constitution, Kansas Constitution, which means, yes, we have a right to abortion. Okay. Okay, so no means no change. Okay. Yes means, yes, change the Constitution. Yes, give politicians the right to make laws around uh, reproductive health. So yes means change the Constitution. No means keep it as it keep is. Keep it as it is, okay. no change. Right. So I think something that is gonna be difficult to talk about, but I think that we have to, because I, when I think about this issue, uh, you know, I'm not interested in sharing my personal viewpoint right now, but I am interested in thinking about how are people making this decision? And I know so many people are making this decision based on gut instinct or how they were raised or what religion, religion they follow, mm -hmm. all these deeply personal things. And I understand that in some cases, those gut instincts supersede our ability to look at hard facts. But mm -hmm. one hard fact we need to face is that if this amendment passes and people in this state do not have a right to abortion health care, then we are really looking at children who will be raped and telling them, you now are going to have a baby. And I think that's something that, again, is very difficult to address, but we are naive if we don't. And, and there are further repercussions, things that we don't wanna think about, things we, we don't wanna talk about or think about children experiencing. But when we're looking at other states like Ohio where a judge looked a 10-year-old in the eye and said, I'm sorry, you're having this baby. Hmm. And for a 10-year-old having to have a baby, or even a mature woman who is raped and is and, and it's in, in an unwanted pregnancy. It was a rape situation. It's really awful, traumatic experience. And now they might be in a situation to have to co-parent with their rapist. Com trauma compounding trauma. I mean, that's for the next 18 years, the guy who raped you. Now you have this beautiful child, mm -hmm. but the guy who raped you is, I mean, this is, I mean, these are types of things that can happen. Mm -hmm. Not saying they will happen, 
but we've seen it happen in other states. And so mm -hmm. these are types of things that we have to look at. And I love you said earlier, these are just ugly truths. We don't mm -hmm. like to think about yeah. these things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, unicorns and rainbows, way mm -hmm. better, way right. better. Way yeah. better. Yeah. But, yeah. but this is- this But is, mental health issues, talk yeah. about yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But if we're going to be asked to make this kind of decision, I think it's contingent upon people to be open about what that really means. And, and people that want to veil the true intent of what will happen in this state are underestimating the ability of voters to make a sound decision for themselves. Mm -hmm. I just think we all need to be educated. That's right. When you, when you go to the poll, you really do mm -hmm. need to know how everything is mm -hmm. played mm -hmm. out. Yeah. The, the pros and the cons, mm -hmm. and then be able to use your intelligent mind to go and, and put down what you feel and what you think mm -hmm. and not have somebody dictate that to you because mm -hmm. a lot of times we're getting a lot of noise from a lot of well, different places. That's right. Check yeah. the language. Yeah. What you know, does it mean? And what you are not mean? just voting for yourself. You are voting for anyone with a uterus. Yes. Correct. Correct. And I also just want to add in there that, you know, we talk about these exceptions and these awful things, but who among us hasn't had sleepy early morning sex without protection? Who hasn't mm -hmm. had that extra drink? When do children become punishment for sex? Sex is a natural human need, desire. There's nothing wrong with it. And yet uh, you're basically saying you can't have sex unless you want to reproduce, right? Mm -hmm. and, and where is the statute that's going to dictate that for men? Uh, excellent question. Oh, well, let's yeah. not go there at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if, if this is how we want to view, if you're viewing this as a punishment, it's this is a very, uh, you know, this is this is a one-sided punishment. That's right. Yes. yes, I agree. Argument. Agree. Mm -hmm. okay. Very smart. So yeah. let's go over it just one more time as we leave. <laughs> I just want to think because, you know, when you see that nice little sign, value them both, that means you're going to change the Kansas Constitution. You are taking health care away from women and their doctors. And a no means? No means no change to the Constitution, meaning that women have a right to reproductive health care, including abortion. But this is not this does not mean that we are going to become the wild west of abortion no. because Kansas has over 10 separate individual regulations on abortion and how abortions can be carried out and what has to happen before an abortion can take place. So I do want to be clear that this does not mean that this becomes some kind of unregulated free for all right. in this right. state. Absolutely okay. agree. The regulations stay in place and it and the constitution doesn't prevent additional regulation. Right. right, if we keep that uh, in, in our Constitution. There's so much more that could be said, but that's all the time that we have for today. If you'd like to watch this program again, visit us online at watch.ktwu.org. And if you're so inspired to learn more about Dr. Sullivan or to find out what's coming up on a future show, be sure to visit our website, www.ktwu.org forward slash inspire. Inspiring women, inspiring you, and inspiring research and an educated vote on KTWU. Thank you for watching. Inspire is sponsored by Kansas Furniture Mart, using furniture to inspire conversation. And by the Blanche Bryden Foundation.